Hey, this episode we're going to jump into what we think about our Goldwing Tour 6-speed manual after a year of ownership, and we'll give you guys some honest feedback based on our motorcycle backgrounds, our riding experience, and uh, having uh, another bike as well as this one, and having ridden other bikes, uh, really what we think about it all. So let's uh, get into this. I was made for this. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Enemies close, have me thinking they friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free into the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my hands. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, your roll, your roll, pay so, pay so, add it up. Everything is on me, gon' back it up Matter what? Told you I'ma do me, why you hating on me? It's not adding up I do roll like a Mack truck Country heart, I'ma cop a farm and go act up Lot of scars, I was cold hearted, now I'm backed up Keep it real, I do this once a month, I don't rap much I just take the money and go stack up Only buying car heart, car car, take it tatted up All that other bull, it don't matter much You only climb me, I put the ladders up No fault I done doubled up on the workload I think I fell in love with the bankroll Pray up, get money, then we lay low Then we lay low Add it up, bankroll Euro, peso Add it up, I'm just doing me Everything is on me, oh you matter what Add it up, bankroll Euro, peso Add it up, I'm just doing me Everything is on me, oh you matter what Add it up, told it if it's all me Everything is on me, gon' back it up Matter what? Told you I'ma do me, why you hating on me? It's not adding up All right, so the star of the show is the 2018 Honda Golden. Terry, tell us, how's it been owning this thing for a whole year? Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of On Down the Road Productions and owned our Goldwing tour to 2018 with a six-peak manual for over a year it passed the one year of ownership mark last December and January and we bought the bike with less than one mile on it it's a brand new bike right before COVID kicked off and full warranty purchased like a brand new 2021 gold wing and we love it it's been a great bike So what have you used the Goldwing for this year? You guys may have seen we uh, use the bike to go to and from work. The locking luggage is a godsend for laptops and electronic equipment. You guys, um, this form-fitting luggage, my laptop, everything is in here. We've taken it up north to the Upper Peninsula. We've done motorcycle touring with it throughout Michigan. And the bike is rock solid. That's awesome. So what do you think ha have been some of the key issues that you've had with the bike? One was getting service. The first oil change for the bike, which we videoed, told I would have to wait three to four months for the oil change. The bike needed, just went and spent $60, $70 and did the oil change myself right here in the garage. The Goldwing is the type of bike, whether you get the six-speed manual or DCT version of this bike, it kind of forces you to work on it yourself. And you have to have a lot of patience with Goldwings because of all the parts on the body and everything and the specific torque requirements for putting things back together. My first issue would be, you have to wait for service if you insist on using the dealer. That's my first issue with the bike. The next issue with the bike is it's very easy to take a bike like this that looks sporty and clean and elegant and turn it into a geriatric machine with a lot of fake chrome parts on it and a lot of doodads, which I don't agree with. I think the bike as designed looks pretty sporty, appeals to younger people. So what I don't like is how careful you have to be with modding the bike to keep the flavor of the original design and not have it look like it belongs to someone over 70 years old. What have you really enjoyed about the bike and the one year of ownership? Riding it. 
Wow. I've also referred to how smooth the six-speed manual shifts and how nice it is to shift. Can have a lot of fun doing it. Another area I like is handling for such a for such a large bike. I think if you're gonna get into a touring bike, you should get the six-speed Goldwing Tour. It's got a dry weight of 844 pounds, and compared to other touring bikes, it's got a weight advantage. It's lighter. So that's pretty darn cool in my book. Another area of the bike I give good marks to is the low speed handling. I'll demonstrate some of that right now. You can see this light's going green. Okay, I'm gonna really go slow here. It's good. I can creep it really nice. I can, gotta get moving, I got someone behind me. But I could have taken it down to two or three miles an hour, even one mile an hour, without putting my feet down. So the six speed Goldwing it's pretty darn good for that stuff. This transmission on this bike is smooth shifting. It's just a, a pure pleasure to drive. Uh, I love the torque of the motor. I love tour mode. I uh, really don't use sport mode on the bike. Really don't use econ mode. Really haven't plowed it through a lot of rain yet, but I'm sure it's fine there. The next thing I would say is the tires on the bike are excellent for wet weather and highway riding. So another thing I really like about the Goldwing that we've got are the tires. They're excellent and I know that the tires on the bike are probably more likely for highway use and rain use so I'm looking forward to uh, getting this bike out in the rain and see how it compares to the Rocket in the rain. Rocket did great down in Florida with surprise rains. That was some good riding actually. You would think riding in the rain is not fun, but I didn't have to put rain gear on. It was just enough rain. It felt good after the hot sun and then it's very refreshing. So I'm sure this bike will do fine in rain mode. I'm not worried about it. I give the tires high marks so far. Uh, they're not as wide as the Rocket tires, obviously. They seem like really good tires to me for this type of bike. Just a really great, capable, solid bike. I also really like and enjoy the double wishbone front suspension. So it rides like a car. Braking on the bike is another area I give high marks to. Just brakes really nice. Really like it. Even in a quicker panic stop, it's got great composure. Well done, Honda. So I give the I give the brakes very high marks on the Goldwing Tour as well. As far as I'm concerned, this is by far the smoothest riding motorcycle I've been on. And this has a lot to do with that, along with four different preload suspension adjustments. This bike has just got a wonderful, nice ride to it. Other design features I like are the sides of the engine kind of protect your legs a bit if something's flying in debris why debris why debris comes blowing through you guys know what i mean functionality on this bike is great in terms of like you know these mirrors again blocking your hands a bit and some of the engine protecting your legs when you're moving and some other things on the bike as well that direct airflow around the bike as you uh motor cycle your way through life to work or on pleasure trips or whatever you do with your your motorcycle or honda goldwing what I don't like about the bike is the hill hold. I'm happy it's got it. And I originally thought it was holding for five seconds, but I guess it only holds for three seconds. That's literally pointless. I feel, given the experience, direct experience I have with the Triumph Rocket, that you engage hill hold, it should stay engaged until you disengage it. And on that one, Honda, I think that's an easy fix for you. I'm curious if there's an aftermarket manufacturer out there that has an override for the hill hold to make it permanent on the Goldwing. I'd buy that immediately. So I'd like to see the hill hold functionality improved on future Goldwings, definitely. Okay, would you recommend that anyone, that people buy this bike? And what level of rider is this bike designed for? The touring market for motorcycles is huge. These are large bikes. I would advocate that if you want a touring bike to get the six-speed manual Goldwing. Dry weight is 844 pounds. The other touring bikes on the market are way heavier, except maybe one or two other ones. This bike is easy to manage and handle low speeds. There are no issues at low speeds. It maneuvers great. I would advocate that if you insist on going into a tour bike that you come right here to what we did. Get a six speed Goldwing Tour with a manual. My understanding though is that in 2022 they only offer the Tour with the DCT transmission. You find one used now 
you're not gonna be making a bad decision. Once both bikes are in their top gears, it's all the same. Six gear on this bike, 45 miles an hour going to six gear, ride all day like that if you want. So what do you have planned for the bike in 2022? 2022 is obviously, I hope, Pray that we spent some time on it together, doing some fun things together. Continue to use it to go to work. Inflation's been breaking everyone's back right now. This gets great gas mileage and taking this to and from work, I don't have to spend that much money on gas. It's our go-to for work. And I planned some trips with a fellow Goldwing rider, definitely to other parts of the country and in and around Michigan. It's competing with the Rocket 3 GT back there too for some of this action. I intend on having some very specific Goldwing upgrade videos coming soon, things like that. Okay, and any last words about the bike for your experiences with the bike over the past year? Yeah, I mean, I just did a, you know, we just did a video on, you know, tips for riding a motorcycle to work. And this bike is amazing in high crosswinds, heavy winds. I've heard that people that own DCTs have trouble below three miles an hour around that area, keeping their bikes upright. Not on this bike, very well balanced. I would highly recommend it. I think the color, this color here, this metallic dark ruby red color, it really stands out in traffic when I take it to work. So I view this to be a very safe color. When this bike is outside in the sun, outdoors outside of this garage, this paint finish looks amazing. Totally amazing. So anything interesting happened to the bike since you've owned it? Well, I don't know if interesting. I took some paint off right here on the handlebar camera equipment. I wish I hadn't done that. I think I can get some touch-up paint or something to, to fix this. I don't think that's the end of the world. And then over here, my very first trip to work, I got my first paint chips right here. Here's two paint chips. Here, got our first rock chips riding to work. Uh, must have gone by a dump truck. And I'll work on that too. Maybe do a video on how to fix this. I'm thinking out loud that Dr. Color Chip may have the match for this color. I think I can take care of that. But it happened, right? We use our bikes. And I think this is fixable too. For detailing tricks. Not too worried about that. But I, those were those were really, these were really, this was a really tough rocket. It flew into the bike. So I know this is your first, your first Goldwing Honda yeah. bike that you've ever owned. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm very grateful to uh, Max McAllister and Traction Dynamics. I think I've spoken to him twice on the phone. What a great company. He employs people. He's a Goldwing expert. And anything I bought off of Max McAllister, whether it's been the kickstand pad, asking questions about his new products like oil pan guard for underneath here. Max McAllister's been the most helpful person to me since I bought this bike in terms of me owning a Goldwing for the first time. He's just got a great personality for the Goldwing community and does phenomenal work. And I know that we have trailered the Triumph a few times and then we tried to take the Goldwing to Florida and you installed some clips, right? Yeah, yeah, they're right here actually. These are the Ciro tie-down clips for the Goldwing. I just left them on. We did both sides to... Uh, and then what happened? Why didn't we take it? It was just an issue with the trailer we had. I didn't feel confident that that trailer would do the bike justice on that long trip, and I think I was right. The angle of the trailer tie-downs compared to the angle of these tie-downs, I didn't feel comfortable with. And I, whether it's this bike or any other bike out there, whether you're riding it or trailering it, I just tell everyone, follow your intuition. So my intuition was telling me, uh, nice effort getting this ready for Florida. The Rocket 3 GT obviously trailered better than this with the trailer we had at the time. Okay, all right, so you've had the bike for a whole year and you mentioned that you bought it with one mile. Yeah. What are you at now? Well, let's find out. Here it comes, drum roll. It looks like 2,743 miles. Seems like it should have more. So I know there's a lot of accessories that are available on the aftermarket for a bike like this. What are your thoughts on aftermarket accessories? I learned this from owning a Harley years ago. You can spend a lot of money on plastic chrome pieces for the bike. Seeing these aftermarket accessories advertised as like completing the design of the bike and things like that. I just am on the side of the fence where Honda did a great job with this and can't think of anything with the body line or adding chrome to it that would make the bike better. I, I just totally can't. Obviously too, when you own a motorcycle, if you spend a lot of money on accessories, you're going to not recoup that when you sell the bike. And the other thing is like, I know almost every Goldwing I see has that rack here with the brake light integrated. I don't think we're going to do that. 
I want a clean look here. And I've had no issues here with these tail lights. They're pretty equivalent to car tail lights. And I'm, I think the visibility factor with the rear tail lights is excellent. And then there's a reflector back there too. This one's got the yellow turn signal indicator. One of those accessories I've seen is like to fill in this space right here. But I thought about it from an engineering point of view and my product development background. Could this be open for airflow? This opening here, air is coming through here. I don't think I want to close it off. You know, those are the things I'm talking about. This luggage rack to me that only holds 18 pounds, I don't want to deal with it. What I will do for the bike, I would like very much to do the CB radio. I know that we've got Bluetooth and all that. I think this bike would tick up a bit with that antenna and a CB radio outfit on it. One day I'll do that. A CB? Yeah, like a trucker CB. Breaker Breaker 1-9, good buddy. <laughs> So uh, yeah. going for something that differentiates this bike from other bikes, and I think a CB radio with that black antenna would look really sweet on here. I'd use it. I think you'd have some convincing to do for myself on that one. 25 watt speakers here, I think are more than fine for me. Not obnoxious and they sound good enough for me. I don't see us changing that either. All right, so we know that gas prices are kind of out of control right now. What type of gas do you use for this and what type of mileage does it get? All right, 47 and over miles to the gallon. I only use premium on both bikes and you're gonna say, why are you spending more money on premium when you could use 87 or 89 octane? It's because of the better combustion, better performance of the bike, and it's a proven fact. You use a higher premium, you'll get better gas mileage and better performance. And I just think it's better for both engines, the engine of this bike, which is the best motorcycle engine made as far as I'm concerned. Another area I really like about the bike is you can tell we're going up some hills here. I think that guy saw me. Uh, is there's never, another area I like about the bike is there never seems to be a lack of power, no matter what gear you're in really like that bike's got great torque go around this mail truck here and it scoots really nice i love the way it sounds i would never go aftermarket exhaust on it either i'm happy with the way that it is i can hear it it sounds quality sounds uh super super good to me what a great bike i don't think anyone makes a better engine than this boxer six so another area of the bike i really like you can tell here we're coming up to a hill and just gradually going up the hill the bike even though i'm shifting and everything else the bike has all the power it needs it feels robust going up hills or when you need power the bike feels very very robust i think that's hard to convey on a lot of motorcycles a lot of motorcycles have the horsepower and torque but you hit the throttle it's like being on a race bike not this bike it delivers its power i'm in tour mode right now on the mark in my opinion from my perspective so when you're going up hills like this or dealing with elevations in the road really nice this motor functions extremely well wonderful and comfortable adjustable suspension it's a great touring bike for one rider the Goldwing beats it especially with two riders for, for comfort comfort and features I agree I don't like riding on the rocket but no one does I've got this sweet back seat here that's heated yep Yep. I don't envision myself ever getting on the back of the rocket again. Yeah. Hey, I do need people to tell me how they got this off their bikes. I what tried is to take it? it off. It, it, it peels off. You don't use gunk. This is a sticker here. I tried to peel it off. You can see the little bump here. Well, it's a good reminder. Yeah. I'm curious how other people did it without using gunk or gooby gone because gooby gone removes But it's a good paint. reminder to wear your helmet. Yeah, sure. I don't care about stuff like that. What, wearing your helmet? No, this decal sitting there like that, leaving the decal there. I think I left a couple decals on the rocket too. So that, that leads me into another question. What are your thoughts on like helmet versus no helmet, riding around in flip flop? I mean, I've seen people on Harleys in flip flops. Yeah, that's not safe at all. I would want to be a safety advocate. Also with the type of helmet, you know, they've got the helmets where the chin pops up and you can take a drink of something. Those aren't safe because of the number of chin injuries in motorcycle accidents that I'm aware of. But obviously use a helmet no matter what. Come a long way for comfort and coolness. You know, obviously wear protective gear. To Teresa's point, wearing flip-flops on a motorcycle is a recipe for disaster. You know, we talked about the, the look and the, and the, in some of our previous videos about the engine on the rocket. Okay, so I know that you talk a lot about the three-cylinder engine on the rocket. Can mm -hmm. you dive into a little bit more detail about 
the engine and the Goldwing. Yeah, it's a six cylinder Boxster. I believe it's 1,833 cc. When I start, every time I start this engine, it's like a major event. It feels like a solid piece of gold starting. The best quality start I've ever had on a motorcycle. It is so smooth. It's pretty quiet too. It's super quiet. The Rocket's louder than this. They both have stock exhaust systems and I can't sing enough praise about this motor. I just think it's the best motorcycle motor made. All right, guys. Guys, thanks for watching this episode. We did it under the watchful eye of Piper. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Again, hit like and subscribe. We'll see everybody next episode on Down the Road. And salute.